Potter spells. Are you right? Really? Because it's all based from Latin. There's like. And the Harry, if you look at Latin, Harry Potter ending. spell is basically like. The levitate one is basically if you like go to Latin and just lift. Yeah. So, Sorry. clouds. Cumulus. Clouds. We'll do it. We're not gonna get that technical. Hi, welcome to Bottega <laughs> Banter. Banter! Banter! We are bantering them heavy today. Uh, my name is Liesl. We've got Michael here with me to be my banter buddy. And we're going to put some happy little clouds into our happy little painting. So we've already painted a nice like, uh, mountain majesty scene here. Maybe we've been hiking around the Pacific Northwest. And we're a little tired of our gloomy days, so we're thinking maybe summertime here. In nice beautiful clouds where we're enjoying the beautiful day. So I'm going to show you uh, basically two different styles, a couple easy ways to pop a little cloud into your happy painting here. I'm going to wet my whistle, and then we'll start talking about this happy clouds. That's a good little day. Mm -hmm. So Lizo, clouds are white, right? Yes. No, they're water. <laughs> so I like to do layers because I want to have, like, if, it's, if we're going to get technical, let's talk a little science here, I guess. Where's Neil deGrasse Tyson? We need him in for a little lesson. Okay. Clouds work good with layers because you want to have a little bit of that blue show through. Maybe it looks a little wispy, a little vapory, Mr. Science over here. So we're going to kind of build it up in layers and I'm going to use just white to start. So I'm going to start in the distance. So most paintings, you want to start with the background and work your way forward to things that are closer to you because there's a thing called perspective, but we're not going to get that technical today. So I'm going to use kind of a medium sized brush here. And it's a flat brush. So when I do far away clouds that are really nice and flat, maybe it's a nice calm day, there's not a lot of wind. I'm gonna keep that flat brush going horizontal and even with the top and bottom of my canvas. Now I find that it's always a little easier to put a brush at a bit of an angle. If you go straight on, sometimes you get a little too heavy with your pressure and it kind of blobs in there. And I wanna make sure there's only a light layer of paint. I don't wanna take a scoop because again, I don't want it to blob, I want it to be nice and even, so I like to pancake my brush out a little bit. So I'll paint it flat on both sides there, nice little even coat. And with a nice light touch, I'll just do like a, like a slow motion karate chop. Hi-ya. Yeah. hi -ya. Just like that. Like nice little even cloud off in the distance. So how are you getting the edges of your color so crisp? So the edges of my clouds here, yeah. again, it's that angle. So I've got like a nice little even coat on my brush. And it's just like, if you put your brush, just kind of like laying it down, it's like a nice even layer. And you're just going to drag it apart. Now I want to have a nice tapered edge. So I'm not doing like a hard stop. You know, a karate chop has to pick up a little bit, you know, so you kind of like lightly lift your brush up. And again, like I've talked before, I like to keep my hands stable to the same surface that I'm painting on. So I don't want to be kind of like edgy off in the distance. I like to be kind of anchored on to either my easel or my canvas. You can put a pinky out, you can put your hand out, and just like a nice light drag. Now I don't really want to worry about too many layers on my clouds, because these are like miles away. You know, we don't need to have details on something that's far. Now this is like if I'm having a nice easy, you know, there's like little clouds in, in the distance. Maybe they're kind of hiding behind my mountains back there. If you want kind of a windy day, scrape a little brush or scrape a little paint off your brush. Ooh, ooh. hey cider, help me talk a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Cheers, man. Mm -hmm. So wispy clouds look better with less paint. So I'll just want like a tiny little bit or I'll scrape a little excess off my brush and if I want kind of like a windy looking cloud, I'll put a little pressure down and then just kind of like pull the brush away and just like spread that paint out. You can almost hear a little scratch when you do it. And it gives you this like really wispy, like the wind is like knocking those clouds all across that sky. Also, if you feel like clouds really aren't your thing, but you want to add a variation to your blue sky, this is a great way to add a little detail in there. And it's really just by not having very much paint on your brush at all and scratching it around. So, Liesl, do <laughs> clouds always sit flat like that? Or do you all, like, is it always a horizontal back and forth? Or do you do up and down? I, tend, clouds sit? I tend to like to make my clouds flat on the bottom 
because they do usually sit at like an atmosphere kind of a thing. Like there's different layers where the moisture locks and things like that. Science talk. Mm. I feel like if I personally tend to make a cloud that has a little bottom on it, it starts looking a little cartoony to me. Like I'm getting a little, maybe a little too Simpsons-esque, but you can, it just depends on how you do it. What I'm trying to avoid is that. Now to avoid a little Simpsons cloud, which maybe that's what you want. You know, everybody's got their own paintings. I like to taper mine out because I feel like it looks less cotton balls and more like a happy little cloud that would be in the sky when I'm out hiking in the wor world there. So when I'm doing clouds that are closer to me, you may have noticed a little bit in there. We'll come back to this guy and fix him. What I wanna do is again, I don't like taking big scoops of paint when I do this. I wanna keep it light and wispy and layered. Now with white paint, it can be kind of thin. See how it's sort of drying a little bit on the blue end here? That's okay, we want it to look like there's layers in there. So the first pass of my clouds are gonna be a little bit of like see-through with that blue because clouds are lofty and they have different layers and depth. So we wanna keep some shadow in there. Come back to that guy. I like to think about this as like leapfrogging half circles. So I'm gonna do a little loft at the top of my cloud and then kind of like loft it left it and just do these like little layered half circles keep it kind of wispy and then if you want to do kind of a sweeping bottom where it kind of rounds it off i tend to taper mine by going back and forth again like i was doing before because it levels it off it feels like it's just sort of like moving through my sky it keeps me from getting a little too cartoony it keeps me a little bit realistic there and you can see by how layering it, you get a little bit of that wispy feeling of, hey, there's going to be some things going on. There's some depth in my clouds there. And you can go back over the top with a little extra white to give it that loft. Now, if you end up with a little cartoon cloud where it's like perfect, perfect, let's get a little chaos in there. So what I can do is, again, put my brush a little going horizontal, a little at an edge, and I can just taper those edges off and then just bring a little scoop a little scoop and a swish. Right away, that cloud looks transformed. It's pretty easy. Acrylic paint is super forgiving, so if you ever make a mistake, you can just let something dry. You can always come back and cover it up and do extra layers. You can come back to it in a year and paint on it again and make that cloud look a little bit happier. So you can see here where I kind of let that first layer dry a smidge. If I want to bring a little extra brightness onto those lofty areas, I can take a little extra white on my paint. And again, keeping it a little bit flat. If you're going onto a layer that's a little bit wet, what I like to do is kind of like I'm uh, frosting the cake here. I'm gonna have a, maybe a little extra paint on my brush and just put a little extra white, kind of laying it across pretty quick there. The more we brush over an area, the more it blends in. We're not contouring here. We're adding some drama. Oh, I wish I had some tea to spill. Ooh, who's got some tea to spill? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna add a little extra layers in here. So I wanna have less of that kind of windy wispy, so I'm gonna turn that into a cloud. Clouds are really easy where you can add as many or as few as you like. So if you're really into feeling the clouds, you can add a lot. If you're not super into it, you can just kind of like one little cloud in there. Maybe, maybe you're off in the, like, oh, the Western part of the country or with the big mountains or with the big skies like Montana or Colorado, a little uh, lean to our home towns there yes. where we have more sky and less clouds or maybe you're in the Pacific Northwest where you've got a lot of clouds. Uh, if you feel like you want to add a sunset, you can add little extra touches of lightness or color in there. But that's something that we can show you here in the studio. So we do lots of happy little sunset paintings, lots of little happy cloud paintings, and a lot of things that are the Pacific Northwest where we love. Um, thanks for joining us for P Bottega Banter. Cheers! Cheers. I didn't like cutting for jokes. <laughs> <laughs>